2%. Sean, thank you very much. It's now 22 minutes past seven. I had been 15 years in Guantanamo without any judge or without any sentence. I said if I left Guantanamo, I would kill Americans. The voices of former detainees in Guantanamo Bay who were released into a Saudi rehabilitation program to which the filmmaker Meg Smaker was given access for three years. The result is The Unredacted, a documentary showing torture victims who had also previously in some cases been bomb makers, talking about their experiences and adjusting after 15 years in US military detention. Meg Smaker's film was shown at Sundance earlier this year, but she then faced accusations about ethics and portrayal that led to it being barred from other festivals and her main backer pulling out. She's now trying to distribute it herself. It's at the Art House Crouch End in London this week and also available to BAFTA members to view. And Meg is here now in the studio. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for having me. Tell us about the Access Festival. How did it come about? Yeah, it was obviously not very easy to get uh, access to a place like that in Saudi Arabia. And it took me about a year to get access. Um, and it kind of came down to the the uh, Saudi government um, said, OK, we'll allow you access to the center, but you're not allowed to film one frame unless these men agree to this project from, from the jump, which is, you know, a really tall order. And I think they knew that the, the men would say no. But How many did you ask? Um, I interviewed over 150 of these men, um, and around that 150, 30 of them were interested in the project. And of that 30, only 12 were interested in doing the project without any kind of face blurring or anything like that. And for me, it was imperative for the audience to be able to see these men's eyes, because that's how we connect with other human beings. And, and the film, at its, at its essence, is trying to understand these men on a human level. And, and yeah. I mean, it includes some really disturbing accounts of, of torture in Guantanamo Bay, including including sexual assault. And um, I, I have seen it in its entirety. And in many ways, it tells the story of the war on terror in very, you know, in, in, in through, through an uncomfortable lens on multiple fronts. Can you say that you had free access to these people? Because this facility is somewhere the BBC has been given access to it yeah. um, in the in, in the past as well. Um, but I'm guessing not to this level. No, not not talking to people like this. But did you feel that people were consenting freely to the questions you were asking? Oh, yeah. I mean, one of the things that I do in the film is, you know, before I started filming with these men, I said, listen, this is a conversation. This is not an interrogation. And if I ever ask you something that you feel you have to lie about or you don't want to uh, talk about, all you have to do is say, skip that question. And I leave a lot of those in the film for the to be fully transparent with the audience. And so, for example, I ask one of the men who's Yemeni and he's watching the news and he's seen, you know, his country being bombed by Saudi Arabia. And I ask him if he wants to go back to his country to help his people like he did in Bosnia, because he went to Bosnia to to initially when he got involved in all this. And he says to the camera, he's like, you know, I, I really can't answer that because I can't go anywhere and I don't want to get in trouble. So we're trying to be very transparent about, you know, the restrictions of filming in the film itself. And yeah. you, you speak to them in Arabic, you yeah. lived in Yemen, you, um, you, you speak Arabic and you're able to do the interviews yourself. You got a slot at Sundance, which is a very big deal for a documentary filmmaker. What yeah, happened after that? That's like getting into Sundance is like winning the f filmmaker lottery. I mean, the numbers are pretty insane. I think they only took 10 the year that I got in and, and they get thousands of, of submissions. So I felt really lucky. And then... Uh, the film festival was supposed to launch the film and, and my career and everyone's, you know, careers who worked on it and the opposite happened. It, it wound up being the death blow. Because? Um, well, when the film premiered or when the film was announced, so this was about two months before anyone saw it, it was immediately attacked by a group of people online um, with all these crazy accusations. And you've seen the film and so some of these accusations were, you know, the film is funded by the Saudis and it's Saudi propaganda. And if you've seen the film, clearly that's not true. And that it's Islamophobic. Again, if you've seen the film, you know that's not true. And I think that there was just all these accusations thrown at the film continually that after a while people just started believing it because no one can see the film. And so, so other festivals that would have shown it or distributors that would have put it out their cinemas did not? Yeah, so for example, the film got into South by Southwest and it even um, got into a festival in San Francisco where it was given the Vanguard Award. And soon after the online attacks, um, both South by Southwest and the other festival pulled it and then um, took back the award. And it was pretty devastating because at the end of the day, what happened with Sundance is once Sundance programmed the film and then 
they were getting called out on Twitter and then immediately apologized for it. Once a huge festival like that apologized for this film, it kind of makes it radioactive. What's your hope then here in the UK? Well, here in the UK, um, we the film went on a podcast and I talked about it and, it, and that podcast kind of went viral. And then um, I had a GoFundMe page that we were trying to self-distribute it because it cost a lot of money. And so a lot of people heard the podcast. It's a Sam Harris podcast and they donated to it. And one of those people were a BAFTA member. They said, you should bring it over here. This is worthy of a BAFTA nomination. I was like, well, I never thought about that, but let's let's see what, what happens. And so we, we brought it over to the UK and the people, the audience in London have been absolutely amazing and supportive and really seem to be, you know, uh, really, really, really impacted in a positive way by the film. And so I'm hoping that we can just raise awareness and let people know that the film's playing here for, until the 29th of December. And we're also doing a special screening for BAFTA members on the 28th at the Soho uh, Hotel. I think they have a screening room there. But and essentially, that, you, want, you want people to see it for themselves and make up their minds. Yeah, like, my whole thing is just watch the film. You can love it, you can hate it, just watch the film, and yeah. Thanks, Baker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time now.